Let's have a look at creating and using an address locator, also known as geocoding, also known as address matching. Okay, so this is a typical scenario. We have two data sets uh, that we are going to work with here. One is the school's data, and the idea is that you have a data set that's not in a GIS format. In this case, it's just a table, and we have here names of schools and addresses. And so we want to be able to map those and turn them into a GIS data set or feature class so that we can uh, map them. So in order to do that, we need to have a reference data set which has the row data and that we can set up in an address locator so that essentially what we're doing is cross-referencing or taking the, the address data from my school's table and parsing it or turning it into pieces so that we look at what's the, the number on the street, what's the name of the street, what kind of street is it, a street, road, avenue. And then we can use that in order to, to actually uh, geocode it. So the reference data that we're going to use in this case is roads data from a company called DMTI Spatial, which is a data vendor here in Toronto. And if we open this attribute table, they've already set it up in a format that uh, the address locator will look for. So we have the name of the street and things like from left to left, from right to right. And what that means, if we scroll down here, it might be a little easier to see, is that we have address ranges for each side of the street. So there might be a left side of the street, a right side of the street um, for each of these. So if we use this, and if we keep going by the way, there's um, things like the street name, the suffix type, so road, street, avenue, and suffix directions, so whether it's like Dundas Street West, Dundas Street East, and then there's things like which municipality it's in, uh, and which postal code it's in, things like that. Okay, so in order to use an address locator, we first have to set one up, and the idea here is we're setting it up as a service. You can either set it up inside a geodatabase or outside, I'm going to um, just right click on my file geodatabase. In this case, I'm going to do it inside and say new address locator. So it's going to ask me for an address locator style. And what this is, is that it's um, looking for the type of data that's going to be included in the reference data set. So it would be one kind of style for, say, uh, postal code or zip code, another type for streets. Um, so for this example, we're going to use U.S. address dual ranges, and what that means is there's a range for each side of the street uh, in terms of address numbers. So we'll click OK, and you'll notice that it'll say that there's an error um, with that little uh, white X on the red background. You can ignore that for now. It's a bit misleading. As if you haven't done this before, you might think, oh, I've done something wrong. All it means is that it doesn't yet know which fields to use in your reference data for the locator. But if we select the reference data, in this case our roads, um, it will recognize that we want to use that as the primary table. In other words, that's the one that's going to be used for uh, reference. And then it's looked, gone through that data set and looked for field names that it's required, uh, that re it requires. So the from left is mapped to the from left, to left is mapped to the to left, so that it knows which fields to use for um, deconstructing or breaking apart the address into pieces in order to be able to score it and see if it's a match for a particular entry in our school's data set. One uh, thing to note here in this particular data set is that one thing that was not automatically put in was the uh, left city and right city, so I'm going to put those in. As, in this case, they're called left MUN for municipality and right. And if we don't do that, then this locator won't work correctly. Otherwise, everything looks good. We click OK. And this will now set up my address locator. It takes a, a few seconds because it's actually going through and reading all the data in the reference data set. And there's quite a few streets here, so there's a fair amount of data for Toronto. And it's going to set this up as a service. So uh, an address locator is not something that you necessarily just use once. You can. But the way that ESRI has set it up is that you, you create this service uh, that's a tool that can then be accessed over a network or on your own machine and used over and over again with different data sets. Um, in a similar way that you might use a, a, an address locator online, like Google Maps or something like that. Okay, so it's just finishing up here. And so now, if we open up our geodatabase, you'll see that we have a Rhodes uh, address locator now. I could have changed the name. I just went with the default here. Okay, so now we have a service that we can use to map our schools. So if I go over to the schools in the table of contents and I just have to right click on it and say geocode addresses, 
I have to tell it which address locator I want to use. Here I've got one called Roads Create Address Locator. That's just the, the default name. Uh, incidentally, YSRI does have other ones that uh, you can access online, online through things like ArcGIS Online. But what fun would there be in that if we don't create our own? So let's use ours. Click OK. And it's going to say, OK, so I'm going to use the schools address table. Um, it's looking for input fields. Now, they don't have to be called things like address, but of course it's easier if they are. So it's already recognized that it's going to use the address field and the city fields. And I'm going to ask it to create a static s snapshot of a table inside my uh, default geodatabase here, which is just called demo. Otherwise, it looks good. I'm going to click OK. And now it's going to give me um, the status of the matching process. So it's uh, matching uh, most of them quite well. So now it's finished. And I've got a 96% match rate, which is uh, quite good. And then 1% were tied and 3% were unmatched. So now, uh, you know, it's quite common that you're going to have a fair number of unmatched addresses due to just data entry errors, things like that. So you can go in and click rematch and then interactively be able to see ones that were matched or unmatched. For example, here we have um, status of M means that it was matched. If I scroll down here though, you'll see that there are ones that are unmatched. So you can select that. Um, so you'll see here, for example, that this just doesn't have a name in the address field. So obviously that's not going to get matched correctly. And that's not uncommon to have errors in data sets like that. Um, let's see if we can find another unmatched so, so you're seeing here that huh, there's actually some that are unmatched because there's just no data for those. Um, so that's something from the original data set where it's just not uh, in there. Here's one. So this is unmatched. And so the name of the street in the school's data set is 20 strong CRT for court. And uh, it's quite possible that it doesn't recognize that. Maybe it's uh, the reference data version of it is CT instead of CRT. So. Uh, you can go through that and, and interactively try to, to see what the problem is, but I'm going to leave that for now. I'll leave that for you to explore. Um, but what we do have here is if I uh, turn off my roads for a second, is we now have our geocoding results. So those are all the schools that were matched. Um, and now I have that as a feature class in my geodatabase that I can use uh, like any other data set. And that's geocoding.